Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Out of the Ice. Welcome back, everyone. Oh, man. So we just got back from getting some food. We got a story to tell you. So while we're recording this, we're still in the midst of the COVID quarantine, and uh, all of the restaurants are either drive through or curbside if they don't have a drive through if they're not completely closed altogether. Um, and so I got Panda Express. I just drove through. Cat. Uh, decided that she wanted Chipotle uh, after much prodding. Oh, uh, yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> um, what do you want? I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. How's Chipotle sound? Yeah. Oh, my God. I am not. I, I'm not that stereotype. Mm-hmm. Scott. <laughs> uh, anyway. So we go, and the Chipotle that we have has a very small parking lot because it's like a little uh, alcove building in the already big parking lot of the mall. So there's very limited space for cars to go get their curbside pickup and then drive away. Uh, So we find a spot, and there's this guy who... All of these things separately would be fine, Mm -hmm. but together they start painting a picture... So he has a shaved head, clearly not balding. Like, you could tell by where he had to shave that he's not balding. He's just doing that for the fashion. Uh, Tortoise shell rimmed large glasses, like large, you know, uh, modern frame glasses. Um, Like, Mm -hmm. clothing that is very clearly expensive (laughs) and plaid, but is trying to look like it's not Like he got it from the Goodwill and not from the Abercrombie. Is driving a Nissan... (laughs) And is very loudly, like, stereotypical rap in car levels of volume, listening to some kind of talk show. And, like, and clearly it's, like, one guy on this talk show, because I didn't hear any other cadences of any other voice. It was just one guy. And so he gets his food and just stays there, opens up his Chipotle burrito bowl, and starts... Very meticulously and slowly eating it. Not yeah. leaving, not letting another person take the spot so they can get their curbside pickup. Like, he's got the guac, he's adding it to the b- burrito bowl and all this stuff. Then... Because, at, like, at this point, I'm just like, okay, whatever. This guy's kind of getting a pass in my book. Because, okay, sure. Because I'm like, okay, maybe is it something about eating food in your car culture that I don't get because I feel like I'm the only Midwesterner that does not like doing that. (laughs) But uh, I feel like eating food in your car culture is just, I have somewhere else to go. I can't just go home and eat. And it's it's something that's complicated enough that I can't eat while I'm driving. So Mm -hmm. I've got to pull over real quick and eat. But this guy was not being quick about it. You know, this was not the quickness of I've got somewhere else to go in town. He was very meticulously doing it as if he was in the shop. Then, uh, th- there's only one lady who's going, you know, back and forth in and out of the restaurant to yeah. all of the curbside things. Poor thing. And, you know, she she motions to us. We roll down the window. And as we're telling her, you know, Kat's name for the order, he rolls down his passenger side window because we're on the passenger side of him. Cuts all of all three of us, including the worker, off. And goes, hey, can I get a side of whatever? And, uh, I and when he started doing that, because it just, like I, Scott and I looked at each other like, what the fuck? Yeah, like what the hell is this? Like, like al- who, already, who do you think you are? Already, he ordered like the big cup of guacamole, so he's very much into supporting drug cartels, oh. and and now he's I got like the guacamole, by the way. Drug cartel supporter right here. Uh, she loves to suppress oppression. Like, she loves to, you know, just really support the oppression of those poor, in, almost indentured uh, Hispanic workers at the hands of the drug cartel who constantly have their lives endangered. Make her feel bad for eating avocados, guys. Make everyone feel bad for eating avocados. It's the only way we can solve this. Ban avocados. <laughs> um... And so, uh, you know, he's, he's dumping that on, cuts somebody off, like cuts three people off to butt into this thing that he wasn't a part of anymore. Like she seemed like the worker seemed absolutely shocked. Like you're still here. (laughs) You got your food, you know? And then, and then like 
as we get our food and we're pulling away so that somebody else can come park, <laughs> out of a shopping bag, like a county market shopping bag, he gets a brand new bottle of Tabasco sauce. <laughs> and I... Opens it and starts pouring it on the food. I, I just lost it at that point. Like, we're driving away and I'm just shouting, what's wrong with you? Yeah, it just, it's... Th this is why, and like, like all this, this, all, this, all, is... this, all this together, all of this, uh, when you add it all sep, when you just put it in separate pieces, it's just, it's just you would Weird think an asshole, asshole. It's just asshole, a asshole behavior, asshole behavior, asshole behavior. All when together, you, when you add it all together, as you said, hipster. <laughs> He, and, and I'm not talking about, you know, oh, well, the, there are nice hipsters. Of course there are. Cat is. But, like, <laughs> what? Um, I'm talking about the hipster that we all talk about on the internet. The asshole about it. And and this is, this is going to my theory that Chipotle is to, like, food places that Starbucks is to coffee places. It's just <laughs> a den of self-entitled, self-important, probably trust fund supported assholes in the hipster culture community and i hate them i hate that hipsters have completely like dominated the older generation's concept of what a millennial is like those two things are interchangeable to like older generations which is why everybody hates the millennials what they're yeah. actually hating yeah, is like, the stereotypical hipster, but they think everybody is that. Yeah, like like tell like you ever tell, notice yeah, how tell old me. generations are constantly like, oh, they're killing businesses. Oh, they're eating avocado toast. That's all hipster shit. Yeah, I was gonna and like like what did you like tell me again what your mom said about like when you're trying to explain what a hipster was to her? I I she had never heard of the term, so I explained what a like typical hipster is, and she goes, that's just a millennial. And I'm like, no, it's not. I'm a millennial. That's just an age group. A hipster is a culture movement, and it's full of assholes. And, Again, and, there and, are some nice ones. Mm -hmm. Just like in every culture, there are assholes and there are nice people. But there's a lot of assholes in hipster culture because it breeds it. It breeds this sense of self-importance and higher than thou. And if we're going to go on about this, like... so Don't hipster, do that. Yeah, hipster, Don't be that guy. Hipster Don't be that girl. Hipster culture is harmful for some people in a way and i can give you a prime example of why it's because this podcast exists i am the product of two hipsters yeah she's the product of two hipsters and thus never learned anything never got any jokes and for the longest time because she didn't get these jokes paraded herself like she was better than others because it's like i don't go around with the mainstream <laughs> I just, it's, it's, I don't know. First um, year of knowing her in college. <laughs> uh, I don't deal with that stuff. That's general, like, mainstream trash. I did not say it like that. Not like that, but it had it had that... <laughs> Tone. It had that air to it. Yeah, you know, that, that would... Oh, my, my, my mom listens to the podcast now, by the way. She's going to listen to this and be like, what the fuck? I love you, mom. But you could have I mean, done me a little better. No, I'm kidding. I love you, Mom. <laughs> Here's the thing, Mrs. Arius. You somehow didn't know that your daughter hadn't seen Rudolph the red Nose Reindeer. I she, think she... my I think my point is made. <laughs> I think my point is made. And that's your cross to bear. I'm sorry. It's everyone's cross to bear except mine, because I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm still a work in progress. But Yep. But anyway, uh to that point of her now being able to see experience and get things that she was not exposed to before this week we're talking about the first of a great trilogy indiana jones raiders of the lost ark ne often just shortened to raiders never seen an indiana jones movie but i mean at the very least who doesn't know the iconic da 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 Yeah, and, and she knew some things because when we went to Disneyland last year, we did go on the Indiana Jones ride. Yeah. Uh, we were in the single riders line, and it took about 45 minutes to get through the line. Yep. <laughs> it was pretty awful. I, I loved how each time, like, because we rode Jungle Cruise, which is right next to Indiana Jones, like, three times. And each time, the Jungle Cruise skipper talked shit on Indiana Jones. 
<laughs> making fun no, of how long how remember. long the line is. Oh yeah, okay, I remember that joke now. Yeah, Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Long Wait Times. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I like you. <laughs> and then one of them threatened to feed me to the gorillas because I was wearing a banana shirt. That was, you know, that wasn't that like one of the first rides we got on at the yeah. park? Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking, like, it was, like, I was already, like, so ecstatic. Like, mm. I'm like, oh, Mary Poppins, oh, churros. It was at that moment when the guy was making fun of you for yeah. wearing a yellow shirt and saying you're going to be eating. I'm like, oh, there's something special about this park. I'm going to love this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was a great skipper. I doubt you're listening, dude. And you probably deal with so many people, but if you remember the guy in the yellow shirt who you were like, oh, don't worry, these gorillas are reaching out, but they only eat bananas. So, I mean, sorry to you, guy in the yellow shirt. And in response, the guy in the yellow shirt just went, eh, I've had a good run. <laughs> that was me. And you were the best first skipper I've ever had in a day of Disney. Thank you. Keep oh. up the good work. But yeah, I know iconic theme. I knew I know that Papa Harrison Ford is our main character. Mm -hmm. Um got I let's see. Like I, I assume yeah, that the back, ball back before back before he was uh he was Grandpa Harrison and he was Snack Harrison. Oh <laughs> I I'm, I'm, I'm normally not <laughs> the type of person to fawn over uh fawn over a I heard a some main... size. I heard he some size. He was so attractive. Holy shit. Mm hmm <laughs> Like, when he, like, I, we'll get to this later, but, like, specifically, I'm thinking when they first arrived in, uh, see, I already forgot. Yeah, no. They, they, and, like, they, like, and they're looking, they're looking out, and Harrison Ford just gives, like, this big old smile, like, oh, my God, that can melt heart, that melts hearts. Yeah, like, it, it, it helps, too, that he's so very having, like, very obviously having so much fun in this role. Yeah. Like, he pulls some almost... Almost uh, like James T. Kirk from Star Trek level meme faces, you know William Shatner up in there. Like he, like um, when they're opening up the tomb, like for the Ark, and he, yeah. it goes to his face, and he just looks freaking obsessed. <laughs> like just yeah, and there's lightning behind him. Yay. I'm like, this was probably so fun to shoot. Probably also a pain in the ass because they were in a lot of very hot uh, environments. Like deserts and stuff like that. I don't know how much of that was sound stages. Uh, I was able to see some map paintings, but eh. And I'm trying to think of other things, but like I like my preconceptions before the movie. For some reason, like my brain automatically went, "Oh, this is probably just like you know, like a not like a completely like kids like like G movie, but like I'm like this was a movie made for well like kid intended audience hell no oh no hell no it wasn't <laughs> this is a gory ass film and god damn do i love it in the old and a, which by the way uh, yeah by the way i have said this for many years i am now going to voice it on this podcast there are talks that they're going to make another indiana jones like harrison Ford is still going to be in it whoa do not make it like kingdom of the crystal skull stop it I, I know the rating system is different. I don't even think the rating system was around for the first two Indiana Jones. Like, it might have just shown up for Temple of Doom. But, like, let's all be honest here. In a modern rating system, Raiders of the Lost Ark might not be a hard R, but it'd be an R. Like, there is a lot of visible blood, like, holes in bodies, corpses. Like, literally, Man, you I, see I, that I, one I, character pretty early on just skewered. Yeah. In so many pieces. Like... No, the, it would be an R. It'd be an R-rated movie. So, uh, and and he, I honestly think that this is a huge problem with modern movie making in general. The executives or the studio heads or whatever will go to the creative team who is actually making the movie and go, shoot for this rating. Like, shoot for R. Shoot for PG-13. Blah, 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 blah. No. Stop that. Just make a movie. M make the movie, and whatever rating you get, that's the rating of the movie. Don't give a shit about the rating while you're making the movie. I'm just wondering if, like, maybe it's, like, the rating thing is such a thing because they're trying to figure out who the market the movie towards. Of course it is. And you, that's why so many movies go for PG-13 because that hits the widest demographic. Fuck demographics. And it's so dumb. I mean... Like, especially cause, because... Especially because, like... Demographics don't work, by the way. Like, targeting demographics does not work in a large-scale sense. 
most often because one, a lot of people in that demographic are going to feel pandered to if you go too far. And two, a lot of people aren't going to feel pandered to enough. Three, some people will feel like they're pandered exactly the right amount, but in the wrong ways. Like it's, yeah. it's just absolutely wrong headed. Yeah. Not to mention yeah. the fact that demo, like demographic trends are always reactive. And that's why you see like so many movies, like one breakthrough hit will come out and then suddenly like a year or two down the line mm-hmm. at most, suddenly everything is that movie. Yeah. Like they started like after Avengers, everything had to be a cinematic universe mm-hmm. because oh, everything is yeah. reactionary. Stop that. <laughs> Don't do that. If it like, if it works and you're aiming from the very get go to be like, Oh, eventually we could make this into a franchise or we could make this into a cinematic universe. Fine. But notice how, I mean, let's be honest here. The first Iron Man movie, they had to partner with Paramount <laughs> because Marvel Studios was not a thing as it is now. Incredible Hulk, the second movie, is partnered with Universal, which technically the Hulk is still joint owned with Universal. But, like, they had ties that could become a universe, like a universe spanning thing. But a lot of people also thought that Iron Man would not work because before the Iron Man movie, before Robert Downey Jr., you know, became synonymous with the Marvel Cinematic Universe and reinvented himself as one of the god tier actors, which hopefully the, you know, that new uh, freaking, um, what's it, what is it called? Uh, Doolittle. Mm-hmm. Like, hopefully that doesn't tarnish his reputation too much because that movie was a piece of shit. Oh, really? Absolute piece of shit. Oof. And also, a lot of it was, like, overdubbed. Overdubbed? Yeah, literally so much of the film, everybody's covering their mouth. Oh. It's really weird. And that, oh, oh my god, that pisses me off. Oh, <sighs> it's, it's like they thought that the, they were gonna, like, go back and rotoscope the movie. Like, with, a uh, freaking, um, uh, Beowulf or something like that. So they're like... Uh, how do we how do we make that cheaper? Oh well, animating mouth flaps is really really hard to do and takes a lot of time and is expensive. So let's just have them cover their mouth, or mm-hmm. like you know face away from the camera, or have a teacup in front of their face or some shit. I mean that just annoys me in ge- like that shit annoys me in general because I just I have a hard time like I have a hard time following dialogue in movies for some like just it just and this is just general of media in general and this is probably half of the reason why i tend to go more towards the subs when i watch anime yeah. because I, I my brain can't keep up with words sometimes so like i, I even noticed in indiana jones and this is not not getting indiana jones this is every movie for me any like any media i'm like I have no, I'm like, they're talking too softly. I'm like, my brain is just not following. What the heck are they saying? I don't, like, I had to go back and watch a few scenes for this podcast with cap closed captions. So I understood what was going, exactly. I mean, to be fair, I, I turned up the volume a good you, amount in, in, in the, I, and I, I yeah, should have spoken the, up. Uh, it did not help. Yeah, in the um thing, because it's an older movie, like, and the, when they were doing the home release stuff, like they didn't adjust the audio levels as much for that. And since it's a movie that was originally made to be in theaters, the fact that we don't have surround sound hurts. Like it hurts us. That's that's what's happening here. Mm-hmm. If we had surround sound speakers with like the back subwoofer and everything like that, you'd probably be able to hear things on a you know like on those all those very different levels way better. Yeah. But I we get... don't have that because that shit's expensive. <laughs> You know, like, I'd love to have a home theater system, like, someday. I'd love to have the home theater system where it's, like, literally a tiny little mini theater with mm-hmm. the little twinkly star lights. You know lights. what? Now that you put it that way, that makes sense because I'm thinking about, like, it's usually not much of an issue if I have, like, headphones or earbuds or something. Yeah, because it's literally right up to your ears. And, like, you know, you, you get that stereo sound from the ears. And we have a stereo TV, yeah. but it's, uh, like, uh, yeah. three feet away it's, from no, the couch. It's more than three feet. Four feet. Like, it's, like, at least six, eight. Okay. I have big feet. Um, <laughs> but, like, uh, yeah, but anyway. Yeah, any hoozles. Um, hello, tangents <laughs> on the ice. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, but, so, Indiana Jones, it starts off, and I always love that the Indiana Jones movies do this, because, again, they're partnered with Paramount, you know? Mm-hmm. So, we have the Paramount logo... And then it immediately cuts to a matching mountain 
in a jungle. Um, and they do this in every movie. Like, there's some kind of structure that the Paramount Mountain becomes. Uh, in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, you can immediately tell that the movie is going to be shit right from that first scene. Because what does the Paramount uh, Mountain turn into? A molehill. To make the to make the on-screen reference of, oh, we made a molehill out of a mountain instead of a mountain out of a molehill. <laughs> and then immediately CGI groundhogs show up. Oh. It's a piece of shit. That movie sucks. <laughs> and everybody who participated in making that movie should be ashamed. Except for the set designers. The, set was, the sets were pretty good. And like, okay, because I'm trying, man, I need to learn how to like, I need to learn, like this is like, 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 like if you're trying to like write down the whole slide of a PowerPoint kind of notes. But basically, I like I I liked the opening scene a lot. It gave us yeah. a really good, really good taste about what this whole movie is about. We got yeah, a good. Yeah, and, and got, do, you, do you did you notice that you don't see Indiana Jones' face for a good portion of that opening? I uh, honestly, what I thought was going to happen because it opened, it's like oh, it's like oh, South America or whatnot, 1936. And I'm like I'm like oh, okay, they normally do this when they're ready to fast forward to like a couple years later or something. And I yeah. was trying to figure out, I'm like, all right, so who are these two dudes that are going to play, that are going to fuck up and play a role later? And then and then eventually I saw Harrison Ford. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, and and so like, um, you you see this stuff and you see like the two people. Who are like you know the the guides or helpers or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and they seem completely out of their depth. Meanwhile, there's this guy who you're not seeing the face of, like you're only seeing him from the back or like you know, uh, shoulders down or something like this, and he doesn't seem to give a fuck. <laughs> like, just like sees this like you know this um, I guess like uh, it was a dart of some kind, like a blow dart, and he he looks at it, inspects it, drops it on the ground. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, time to move. Meanwhile, they have to go back, and they're like, oh, man, like, poison, bleh, like, all this stuff. And it's like, oh, man, this guy's crazy. Then you finally see him when they find the thing, and he, like, cracks that smirk, and he's like, hell yeah. <laughs> and then from that point on, that's kind of, like, the movie signal of, like, and go. <laughs> like... And it's like, and it does, it does a lot. Like it just an op like we got a, I felt like we got a really good sense of what, like, like what Indy is, like what, like his character and what he's all about. Yeah. Like in such a quick, like that, that's him. Mm -hmm. And it, and it does, it does that thing kind of similar to Star Wars mm -hmm. because like Star Wars is based on like those old Flash Gordon serials. This is based more on like Alan Quartermain and other adventure serials where we don't open to the start of this movie's adventure. We open on the ending of the previous arc. Uh, you, oh, that's that's a neat way to think about it. Yeah, it's, it's like we came in midway on Indiana's adventures, you mm -hmm. know? So, like, he, he's looking for this idol, which never gets brought up again, by the way. It doesn't tie in. Yeah. It's just a separate thing. The only thing that comes back is the uh, guy who one-ups Indy. Yeah. You know, like the little uh, mini boss, basically. <laughs> you know, the sub villain. Um, My brain kept calling him Big Baddie. I don't know why. He wasn't the Big Bad. He wasn't. No, but I uh, guess. I, guess, I, look, I mean, more, technically, I guess he, more, he is more, a major villain. Ma ma but more, more of the baddie for Harris for for uh, Indy himself. Yeah, he's like the he's the rival because yeah. he's he's like this this French guy who's very much like just ah whatever you know. So we see again, Mr. Jones, whatever belongs to you can very easily become mine. And all that stuff. And he, he's not pro-Nazi. He's just like, eh, they're a necessary evil. Like, <laughs> you know, he's like, eh, I'd, I'd probably shoot them all if I got the chance, but they're useful. You know, and, and the real bad, bad guy is the, uh, the Nazi commander guy in the yeah. hat mm -hmm. um, with the glasses. I forget his name. I just I just call him Hair Douchebag. <laughs> I'm sure I wrote the names in here, but I don't remember. I, they're yeah. not important enough to remember for me. The ones that are important are Indiana Jones and Marion. Yeah, <laughs> like they're the, they're the two main characters. Um, and and there's also the third guy, but he's not as big of a player. He will come back though. I, you know, I kind of wish we saw more of him because he you seems, will. Yeah, because if you if you notice, he's also the guy in the pre ride uh, video. For um, Temple of the Forbidden Eye. 
Huh. He's he's the guy who's like, oh, Indiana Jones went into this thing and didn't come back out, so now you have to go in and try to rescue him in these new vehicles with this new invention of seatbelt. So get in there and remember, <laughs> don't stare into the eye. Hmm. So that that's him. At least I'm pretty sure it's him. He's in the same costume <laughs> as he is in uh, movie three. Okay. Um, wearing the fez and stuff. Uh, but yeah, um, I'll probably double check that, but I, I think that's true. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, like, that guy is there, but he's only in a few scenes. He, he's helpful, but he's, like, sidekick. Yeah. Um, but I, I do really like his character, because he's just so very jovial. Yeah, he just, he... It's like, oh, so, I'm afraid, it's like, I'm glad you two aren't dead. Yeah, he, yeah, he just seemed like he was having a good time. Yeah. The helping, but, helping but he's But he's not, he's not, like, a goof. Like, he's not completely a goof, because he does save Indy's ass at yeah, one point. Yeah, Because Indy wasn't paying attention. Oh, uh, yeah. And can, and can I, now that I'm thinking about, like, competent sidekicks, Marion is a lot more competent. She just got really shit luck a lot of the time. <laughs> oh, God. I felt... Yeah, she she can kick some ass, just, like, she's she's clearly not incompetent. She's just in over her head. She's, like, out of her depth. Yeah. You know? Because, like, okay, but... She's, she's, like, a level 5 D&D character going on a quest with a level, like, 16. Yeah. <laughs> like, which, which we were talking about this while um, we were watching the movie. Indiana Jones, if you were making like a 1930s D&D campaign, Indy is definitely a rogue. Like yeah. he's, he's a treasure hunter archetype rogue. Because <laughs> he fights dirty and stuff like that. But anyway, so we're in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of very cool scenes right off the bat. So like, you know... It, it shows that he's clearly experienced with this stuff. So, because he, he's like, trap find another rogue thing. He's constantly finding traps. Oh yeah. You know, and disarming like, them he, he or was so finding prepared. a way to avoid them. Yeah, trying like using that bag of sand while trying to get the idol. And... Yeah, which it it sets that up very, like ingeniously because it's it's a very quick scene. Mm -hmm. But if you if you notice it, you're like, oh, because he he fills the bag of sand when they're at the door to the to the cave. Yeah. Like, and, was, and, and, and at first, like, if you haven't seen the movie before, you're like, what the fuck is he doing? And something else I noticed when he was do with the bag of sand, like, I thought I saw him pour a little bit out. Yeah, he, he did. Yeah, he was trying to guesstimate, like, the mm -hmm. weight, so that was cool. Which, I, I've always wondered, was it still too heavy, or did he fuck up and it was too light? Yeah. Because it sinks down as if it's a pressure plate, but it could also just be it sunk down because... The there wasn't gone. enough weight. Yeah. And so it's just like, well, time to trigger the trap. Uh, which, if it was too heavy, that's a very light golden idol. Yeah. I mean, I guess it could be hollow, but um, that'd be weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's not really the point. Uh, but, like, you know, he, he gets all those traps done and all this stuff, and then the guy's there, and uh, he grabs the idol... We get our Fucks iconic it up, and the boulder ball. shows up. Yeah, the like ball. The, the freaking boulder shows up. They're having to chase the thing. Just, they no, get away just from another, the, just another game of chicky do. Yeah, they 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 like are getting away from the boulder. They have to go through the uh, the thing where he had the whip and he had to like swing across. And it's like, all right, now toss me the rope. Toss me the idol. What? There's no time to argue, senor. Toss uh, me the idol. I'll toss you the rope. I like that that second that happened. I'm like, bruh. Yeah, and. <laughs> Uh oh, heel turn. This guy's an asshole. Well, and well. so he grabs the idol and is like, adios, senor, and like drops the whip. And so Indy has to like try to, you know, jump across. But unfortunately, he fails his acrobatics check. <laughs> uh, but not too badly because he's still able to scramble up with, um, with a good luck roll. Yeah. Um, or I guess a survival check or something like that. But he's, a he's able to, you know, scramble his way up, grabs the whip, and. He, uh, he comes, like, the boulder falls down the chasm, and he sees that the guy apparently forgot about the wall spikes. Dummy. In, in his, like, <laughs> ha I've got the idol thing. And you just see his whole corpse. Like, there's a freaking spear, like, going oh, right he, oh, through see, next to his eye. And, like, it, arrow one coming out of his mouth. Uh, and, like, all this shit. And is like... His face is contorted in this thing of pain. There's just all this blood. Oh, yeah, you know, I didn't even notice, like, how yeah. brutal that one was. Yeah, it, it's fucked. <laughs> it's real fucked. I didn't really notice things. I didn't really, like, 
it didn't register in my brain that some of the, the this stuff was gonna get brutal until like halfway through the bars the bar fight scene oh yeah <laughs> yeah i i remember that um we'll get to that but like so anyway uh the indy gets out with the idol but that rival uh douchebag guy you know frenchy douchebag um Every every villain in this, I just call some form of douchebag. Todd, they I think are. his name is something like that. Like a lot of times, they go by um, last names, and I think yeah. it was something with an F, T- like Frenic or something. Or douchebag. <laughs> or douchebag. Or was, yeah, know, douchebag. Yeah, that's not very specific, is it? Uh, there are there are a lot of douchebags. Yeah, um, I think it was Frenic or something like that. Uh, but he he's he's made allies with the local tribes people. Because apparently he can speak it. And Indiana Jones is like, man, it's a shame they don't know that you're an asshole. Otherwise, they'd probably be on my side. It's like, yeah, well, if only you could tell them. Too bad you don't speak their language. And it's like, you know, telling them to kill the guy. So Indy has to run away. You know, drop the idol, run away. Uh, has to drop the gun, too. Loses that yeah. gun. Um, and, you know, he's he's got a guy on a, uh, on a um, buoy plane. And it's like, start the engines! Like, all these guys throwing spears at him. <laughs> yeah, and running. like, he's just start casually, the like, he's just chilling, fishing, I think. And he's yeah. like, oh, man. Start the engines! And then we got art done. Dun, 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 dun. And, uh, and it turns out there's a snake in the plane. And... The motherfucking snakes in the motherfucking plane. Yeah, Sam Jackson's not having it. <laughs> um, and so, like, you know, that's when you learn that Indy hates snakes. You know, it's like, I hate snakes. Get a snake out of this fucking plane. Oh, come on. It's cute, right? Fuck you. <laughs> just, we get a, get a lot. We, get, we learn a lot about Indy in just one scene. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Um, And so then you, the next thing you find out is that he's an archaeology teacher. You know, he's a, he's an active archaeologist, but he also, you know, is a teacher at yeah, a college. Yeah, pa- paired with a university, which makes sense for his research purposes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's just action archaeologist. Yeah. Uh, which, when I was a kid, made archaeology sound like so much cooler of a career. <laughs> it's like, no, no, it's not just digging in a bunch of, you know, pits to try to find bones. No, nah, you're going on adventures and shit <laughs> like this. I don't know, maybe there is some archaeologists who were like that back in the day, but modern day, I don't think that's really a thing. Mm. And that makes me sad. <laughs> We need more brawling archaeologists. More adventures. <laughs> yeah. Where? Ugh, God. You know, and we still technically have Nazis and the neo-Nazis, so, you know, archaeologists, go fight those Nazis. That'd be, you know, like like a temple, like archaeology like thing. That'd be a really fun theme for an escape room. Oh, yeah. Oh, they have them. Oh, but we gotta go find one eventually, then. It's at the one that we did. Wait, what? Oh, oh my. Yeah, Pharaoh's tomb. I thought... <gasps> I forgot about that. Yeah. We got to go back someday. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, they have them. A lot of the first escape rooms were Indiana Jones-esque themed. But, uh, yeah, so... And, and there's literally... There's this girl who apparently uh, was just recently on a trip to the freaking desert. Because she is parched. <laughs> oh, I wasn't... I had to, That's another one I had to go back. I'm like, what is... I'm like, what? And she literally wrote on her eyelids, which... Ow. Ow! I don't even care if that's like an eyeliner mark or whatever. Ow. Like, that's very thin skin. Wrote, love you. Like, girl! And kept, like, slow blinking. And literally, Indiana Jones is just like, I, uh... Yeah. What? Uh. what? And, <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, he, he has to, like, the class is ended, and he gets contacted by the head like the either the dean of of that part of the university or the head of the university i wasn't sure Mm -hmm. which it is i don't i don't know if they say um but he's got two government people with him like two g-men and they're like hey the nazis are looking for the ark Mm -hmm. you know or i don't even think you did they know about the ark no they knew about the city they knew about like uh, Talon or whatever. I don't remember, honestly. Like they, they knew about the Staff of Raw. Yeah, okay, yes. They, okay, they did name drop that. I remember. Yeah, scene. they knew about the Staff of Raw, and then Indiana Jones and the Dean are like, oh, the Staff of Raw. Well, that's supposed to lead to the Ark of the Covenant. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, what's the Ark of the Covenant? Well, apparently it's this thing where if it's held by the righteous, it will just fuck everybody up. Yee. And, and I'm like, and the Nazis are looking for that. 
You mean the people who are systematically killing the people whose artifact it is. Sounds like a bad plan. <laughs> That's not, that doesn't sound like a smart plan, Hitler. No. <laughs> like, if, the, if this artifact is magical and property, it's clearly going to turn on you. <laughs> oh, hey, you guys have been killing the Hebrews. Die. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and... and uh, but, of course, Indiana Jones uh, doesn't is, is not superstitious. He doesn't believe in all that hocus-pocus, which is very funny. <laughs> um, given what we're about to see and what happens in the rest of the movies. Um, but like he, in fact, especially with what happens in two, cause two is a prequel. Oh, oh, there, oh okay. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't spoil all that for me. But. I'm not, but it, it doesn't matter that two is a prequel. Cause like literally if you miss what date it is at the beginning of the movie, you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell. Um, and so, yeah, huh. But yeah, Indy but, um, and, and suits up and goes on his next adventure. Yeah, he suits up, goes on the next adventure, and he has to go find uh, an old research, research mentor who apparently uh, had a daughter that Indiana fucked yeah. when she was a minor. Did it, did it state their ages? Uh, it said that she was a child, which probably meant like, teenager well and he was like 20 or something i don't I, again i because, i was again, a child it was what, wrong well because i mean that kind of thing i mean I, she was definitely I, I like, younger I there was an age difference I was, yeah yeah age i mean i can look back when i was like 18 or 19 and be like god i was a child <laughs> yeah but she seems to be in her 20s and he's probably around 30 yeah so i'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt and say 15 and 25 but this is also the 30s, so uh, I don't know. I get my brain. My brain just always wants to autocorrect to make it not wrong. <laughs> in fact, here, hold on. Oh. You start talking about what's in the movie. I'm gonna look it up. But yeah, so we get to the bar. See, the, like, and you know, Marion was really, really cool. Like she, she was just like, yeah, no, get out of here. Talk to me tomorrow. And we get our baddies coming in. Like they're just about ready to take it. And. Because, you know, our hero has the hero. He comes back to help and save the day. And this bar scene, guys, was really freaking cool. Like I, I love what they we, I love what they do with shadows in that sh- bar. Because okay, everything shadows? is Yeah, everything is lit by like firelight. Mm-hmm. So like when you first see Indiana Jones, he's introduced by a shadow being cast by firelight. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe the door. But like he's he's being cast by shadow and that's like how Marion recognizes him just because of the silhouette. Yeah, okay. And uh, and literally she puts her hands on her hips like, well, time to tell this asshole off. Oh, yeah. Punches him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> at one point, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Um. But, like, I knew shit was going to get crazy in that bar. This, like, because, like, right before, like, we even get into the actual fight fight, we get that torch going off to the curtain and it's starting to set on fire. I'm like, oh, we got some urgency here. We got a time limit mm-hmm. before everything goes really fucking south. Yeah. It just, it was, and, like, this was... This was the scene when I really started, like, it started clicking to me, like, oh, this is going to be pretty freaking violent. Because, like, because, like, a dude was set, yeah. the dude was set on fire and then shot. Like, that, that, that was pretty hard. Like, like, Indy shoots a, Indy shoots a man with another dude's gun. Marion gets a fun little bonk on yeah, a guy's and, head. And the, uh, the, the, Indiana shoots a guy and literally you see the bullet hole in the dude's head and blood just starts pouring out. Yeah. And then uh, eventually, like, Indiana is cornered, is about to be shot. You hear the gunshot. Indiana looks himself over and is like, wait, I'm not shot. And blood just starts pooling out of the guy's mouth. And that's when, like, that and when the bullet hole is pouring blood visibly... I hear her cat go, oh my god! (laughs) Um, And yeah, according to the wiki, she was 15 or 16. Oh. Yeah, so anyway. um, It it was really funny, like, when she was, like, getting ready to go go bonk one of those guys. Like, she, like, there's alcohol, and she just starts drinking. I'm like, oh, she's a drunk. And then she's a bar owner. (laughs) Um, And so... Uh, what happens is, like, the reason Indiana is there is because he's looking for the head of the Staff of Ra. And she has it. 
Like, she has it with her. And um, Nazi guy knows that she has it. Mm -hmm. Indy's willing to pay her for it. And uh, the Nazi guys are just like, oh, yes, we'll pay you by not burning your bar. And it's like, oh, well, uh, I don't have it. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Schnell! And, like, just starts about to torture, and that's when Indy shows up. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the in the scuffle, main Nazi guy tries to grab the uh, head of the staff, like the amulet, with his bare hand. But unfortunately, it had been, like, right next to the fire, and it's made of metal and crystal. So it's, like, burning hot. And he's like, ah! Drops it. And just, just and goes. Pulls out. Like, through a window. Yeah, out the window. And, like... <laughs> You know, has to his hand in the sand is all blistered and shit. But unfortunately, uh, <laughs> it leaves a perfect scar uh, of the oh, amulet. Yeah. So that's a shame. Um, <laughs> but eventually, Marion gets it back, grabs it with a with a cloth because she's not dumb, and uh, and is like, you know, her bar is completely burnt down now, and is like. I'm not your psycho girl, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm your goddamn partner. And so the next thing we see is they're, like, in Cairo. Yay. And they're they're with they're with Happy Boy. Yay. Happy Man, and there's yeah, a monkey. Yeah, it was here in Cairo on the roof when, like, Harrison Ford, like, was looking out, and he, like, cracked a big old smile, and like, oh! <laughs> Indiana! <laughs> um, and so there's this monkey who just, like, shows up. <sighs> And like, uh, like apparently just really likes Marion, and it's like, oh yeah, he is, he is kind of cute. Oh well, then we will welcome him into our house. Oh no, you don't have to do that. But of, of course, you know it's a fluffy animal that's being nice. Yeah. So like anyone would, Marion immediately bonds with it. And <laughs> the second that the monkey just runs off, is like, wait no, where's she going? And like all this stuff. And Indiana's just like, eh, the monkey's lived there his whole life. It'll be fine. And it turns out the monkey's a bad guy. <laughs> It's a Nazi monkey. Nah. We literally see Kyle's. Yeah. Oh, yes! What the fuck was that? <laughs> monkey see Kyle. <laughs> Nazi monkey. And uh, that monkey is a fucking asshole, too. Because it keeps switching sides because it's a spy monkey. And again, this is... An, like that, And because of that monkey was another case of Marion, like... Marion she, successfully yeah, yeah, hides. She, yeah, she, yeah. She, she succeeds on her stealth check. Yeah. But... But monkey. Yeah. Jesus. Um, and she actually, she gets some good hits in, too. She, like, she grabs a pan, leads a guy into a room, and you just hear, BOOM! Yeah. Guy falls over, gets dragged in, and she leaves. Meanwhile, Indiana Jones is having to fucking fist fight everybody. <laughs> and one of the best scenes in all of cinema oh. history shows up. Oh, Where, like, Indiana God. Jones already beat up and, like, tired from all the fighting and running, trying to find Marion. And, like, I was in the middle of writing notes when this scene was coming up, and Scott had to tell me, stop, watch this. Watch all of this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, just this freaking scimitar guy is just like, ah, flip, 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 sword shit. And Indiana just goes, fuck this. And pulls out his revolver and bang! So I... And I've... turns around <laughs> as the guy's still falling. <laughs> So I I looked I looked up some more information about that scene. That was uh, improv. Improv by Harrison himself. Yeah, and and the sword guy just went with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I forget what was supposed to happen in the scene. Uh, he was supposed to use his whip to get yeah. the, the get, get it out of his like, get the guitar, sword. Yeah, out of his hand. Yeah. But uh, Harrison wasn't feeling well. Yeah, uh, he like he had stomach poisoning or something like something. food poisoning. Yeah. Because he did look like shit in that scene, <laughs> so he's he's just like fuck this. Bang! It, it it just somehow worked very it, it worked. I worked I just well. I I love that I don't because it does change, uh it does change camera angles a few times which means there could have been multiple shots after he did it the first time mm -hmm. and they were just like oh that's brilliant uh but, but yeah. I like to think that even on the first take of that improv that the sword guy was just like all right so I was actually <laughs> I was even looking up some more information pretty much every scene. Like they don't, they didn't do more than four takes for every scene. Yeah, it, it that seems about right because there's a lot of pyrotechnics and stuff that like they could only do so many times. Yeah, they they really just tried to get like as much done in like a, like a day's worth of uh, filming as possible. Oh yeah. So I'm sure like, uh, uh, upon yeah probably because a lot of it was filmed on location too and that can get really pricey. Yeah. Because like you ne then have to like you still have to have like craft services for people. You have to have housing for them. And mm -hmm. like hotel rooms and stuff, you need to make sure that they're safe. So you probably have to have some guards, mm -hmm. you know, if it's in a sketchier part of the area. Um, 
and stuff like that. Uh, but um, God, does it look good? <laughs> I mean, not to mention they have fucking submarines and boats and shit too. So that's like vehicle rental. <laughs> you know, granted, some of it is probably on sound stages and like you know movie magic cheating, but still. Um, and so eventually, Marion gets captured. Uh, how, and, and how did she uh, like? Okay, did like I miss something? They switched I, the basket. Okay. They switched the basket, but it's it's not shown on camera. I don't think, or if it is, it's like not shown obviously. Yeah, because because you're supposed to think she's dead. Yeah, that, and that's what I thought because I looked at the because again I, I like I missed it the first time around, and I rewatched the scene afterwards. And I'm like, yeah, I'm still missing something. What the hell? Yeah, like um, I I know what happens because they actually. It's easier to see in the stunt show at Hollywood Studios. Okay. Because you're seeing it all from one thing, and the truck goes by, and uh, Marion jumps out and then gets captured again. Okay. Like that's that's what happens at least in the stunt show. She like she's like, oh, I'm in the back of the truck, jumps out, and then two guys grab her, and she's like, oh, come on. <laughs> again, just the worst luck. Yeah. But so everybody thinks that Marion's dead. Or at least all of the good guys do. The two of them. <clears throat> and, you know, Indiana Jones uh, is, is just, like, getting drunk. Because he's like, fuck. This person died, and I actually did care about her, and I did genuinely feel bad for fucking over that one time. All that shit. And, and uh... He, he has a good heart. Yeah, and French douchebag shows up, and is like, <laughs> why should I not kill you just now? And it's like, well, because look at all my friends! And they all uh... point guns at him and shit. There's this tense thing... And, uh, and again, the monkey is just, like, playing good guy. You know, it's like, good like monkey, oh, yeah, monkey. yeah, let, here, Indiana Jones, pet me, blah, 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 oh, I'll go with you, and all this shit. Um, but, uh, you know, spy guy is still showing up, and all this shit. And, uh, happy boy, uh, sends some kids in after, and it's like, oh, next time it'll take more than kids to save you, Indy. <laughs> all this shit. They go, and they retreat, and it's like, Marion's dead. It's like, yeah, I know, that sucks. <laughs> Um, but you're still alive. Ah, that's, you know, Yay. positives. <laughs> um, and all that stuff. And so, you know, he's he's trying to figure out the next step and all this stuff. And when they decide, he has a date in his hand. And he, like, flips it up to eat it. And happy guy just <laughs> catches it. And he's like... And, like, he clearly is, like, you know, frazzled. Because he's like, oh, shit, I'm glad I got that. No. You know, and it's like... Bad dates. And, like, points behind his shoulder, and you see that the monkey ate some of the dates and died. Justice. Yeah, justice. <laughs> um, even though you do still feel kind of bad, because, like, oh, no, dead fuzzy thing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Humans are just... We just dead fuzzy we, baby. We, no. we, we just want to pet the fuzzy animals. Um, and so the next thing you see is they're sneaking onto the dig site, and they, they get into the... Uh, it's not the Wall of the Souls. Wall of the Souls is what they're looking yeah. for. It's like Temple, uh, Room of the Sun or something like that. Yeah, and, and I'm thinking, I was thinking about this earlier, and this like comes up again with one there. And they, and and they the see the camp. ancient Egyptian model train set. Well, hold on. I, I, there was something I like. I noticed it a little bit later, too. Indy would fit well into a Hitman game because yeah. he just blends in so well. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like, in... in Freaking incognito button, tilt hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I love Hitman games. I love being dumb in Hitman games. <laughs> Hello, bang. Hello, bang. Like, I, like there was a time where, like, I went to bed, or, like, I went to bed at my normal time of, like, 10 p.m. You stayed up to play Hitman, and the next day, like, he's like, cat, look what I got. And you got, like, this ridiculous, mm. like, in the first level, what was the ridiculous costume again? Like a magician uh, outfit? It was a magician vampire. Magician vampire, like, look what I got. And they're like, this is the worst. This is obnoxious. I love it. <laughs> um, and there was one time, it was uh, in Hitman, like, the, the reboot, like, the soft reboot. Uh, again, tangent, but this is a funny story. Where literally, I just got one of the, it was the mansion one, like, the drug lord mansion I just mowed everybody down with a shotgun. I remember walked walk in with shotgun, walked out with shotgun. I remember watching that, and I'm just like, this is not how you play a stealth game. Nope. <laughs> but it is how I play a stealth game. <laughs> Bang. 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 
I'm using the corners of your own base against you. Bang! <laughs> chick, chick, bang! <laughs> You're all working for a drug lord! Bang! You deserve this! Bang! I'm the good guy! Bang, bang, bang! <laughs> no witnesses! Bang! What? I'm just a maid! <laughs> yeah, I, I did kill him, didn't I? For, yeah, I think you did. Either that or I punched her in the face. <laughs> knocked her out. <laughs> saying no witnesses. I might have done both. <laughs> there were multiple maids. <laughs> no witnesses! <laughs> um, and, uh, but anyway, so, yeah, Indy sneaks in to the Temple of the Sun, along with Happy Boy, um, who I wish I could remember his name. Salim, I think. Why S- Salim? Salim, yeah. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, and so, like, they, they figure out, oh, shit, they're digging in the wrong spot. And they, they get some of the workers, and they're like, oh, n- d- start digging here, boss's orders, or whatever. Like, <laughs> and they start doing it at night, uh, like, under cover of dark. But the sun starts coming up, and the people are still, like, there, you know, like, oh, we found the thing, oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, it's been revealed that Marion is alive, because Indiana Jones literally just walks into the tent and with that like, hazard, and is like, oh, shit, yeah. I guess they switched the baskets. Oh, I'm so glad you're not dead. <laughs> But and then, and if then, you suddenly disappear right now, they'll start asking questions. So I'll come back. I'm just going to stick this back in your mouth. See, come back. Bye. <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, I'll come back. Poor Marion. Yeah. <laughs> Literally just like... <laughs> Not having it. Yeah. And uh, and the fact that she's a bar owner, she tries to drink a uh, French bad guy under the table. Oh, that was so good. I, Such I, a good give and I, take. Because like, everybody is on... Marion's page in that scene because they're like they've already seen her beat a dude in drinking yeah like they've already seen that so they're like oh shit this is how she's gonna get out and then, and then he just goes another another she passed all of her constitution she's just got real bad rules. yeah she, she yeah she passed her constitution saving throw was ready to get out and then luck unlucky yeah just nope dm had a surprise uh, it's like <laughs> this is from my parents like this is my parents label Oh. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> so then he, she pulls a dinner, like a fucking dinner knife on him. Mm-hmm. Might have even been a butter knife. <laughs> and he's like, I gotta go now. And he's so drunk that he's like, oh, all right, bye-bye. <laughs> but the Nazi guy is there and is like, oh, where are you going, Fraulein? Oh. And she's just like, ah, oh, shit. Get, that's like, th- what, three times she's, <laughs> like, she's shown her competence and then just yeah. got, really got lucky. Again, she's just, she's out of her depth. <laughs> like, she's not incompetent. She's just not used to this. <laughs> you know? And not to mention, like, Indiana Jones has a lot of luck, but there's also a good amount of times where he's fucking unlucky, too. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, fuck. <laughs> Just a bunch of, I mean, there's even one point where he admits, like, you know, because they escape. Like, he throws, uh, meanwhile, Indiana Jones and stuff like this while Marion was trying to drink the guy on the table. Um, Indiana Jones and Salim get the Ark of the Covenant. They, they're they putting it back up, but then they get found out. And Indiana Jones gets thrown back down into the Well of Souls. Yeah. Uh, with the Snakeums. And then Marion gets thrown into the Well of Souls. Um, they... Keep Salim for some reason. They don't throw him back into the Well of Souls. Yeah. They just kidnap him, like tie him to something. Uh, I forget what. Maybe. I don't. He didn't like pose as just a worker, did he? Like was I, he I able to get I, away? I don't that remember. Way? I'll have to look back. I at forget. That. No, they had him. They had him by the arm or something. But uh, I for, I forget why they didn't just throw him into the well. But anyway. So they're having to fight off the snakes with the torches and stuff like this. At one point, like, Indiana Jones is climbing this Anubis statue. Giant fucking Anubis statue. Which was pointing at the ceiling for some reason. <laughs> like, <laughs> weird. Because, like, it's supposed to be, a, like, a buried pyramid. Because it's a city half buried in sand. And yet the Anubis statue is, like, staring up at the ceiling. And there's a way to open the ceiling. It's, it's a bit weird. But whatever. It looks cool. Um... So, like, Indiana Jones sees that in Anubis' open mouth, there's a snake. He literally has to whip his head around with the torch in it to burn the thing. Yeah. Falls on Marion. <laughs> yeah. And and he's like, all right, if this doesn't work, go on without me. And Marion's like, what? And it's like, eh, it might kill me. Yeah! <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> and pushes the Anubis statue in into the wall. Wall smashes. They're able to get out from that way. 
um, and like they push away out, meet back up with Salim, and Indiana Jones is like, Salim, just go back to Cairo. You know, like I'll meet up with you there. Get us a way to get to this place. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh well, uh, you know, how are you gonna get back to like how? What are you gonna do? And it's like, I don't fucking know. I'm making this up as I go. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> it's like I don't know. I'm doing this as it comes. And they're gonna try to steal the plane that they have there that's revving up. And fucking oh, my pugilist McMonk in D and D boxer Nazi. Like. <laughs> Can I just like he had the I don't I really he hope, just seems I, so look, happy I, I I hope that the person that played him he he looked like he was having a generally good time that there was just something about that smile I was like oh I am so happy to be doing this essentially okay <laughs> if any of you have seen it's a bit of a classic meme now but the man like the old timey boxer manly man meme you know like freaking uh d- nails you mean breakfast like all this shit. Just, it's it's a good meme. Look it up. Cat clearly has no idea what yeah, I'm talking got, about. Yeah, I just, I'm kind of giving him the I'm so lost face right now. Uh, a face you're very familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. There was one for Band-Aids. It was like, uh, Band-Aids? You mean like pussy trophies or something like that? I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But it, it was just like, you know, manliness to a point of absurdity. Looks like that guy. You know, put up your dukes. And he just seems so happy <laughs> that he's got a chance to beat some ass. <laughs> like, he he looks out, sees Indiana Jones climbing on the plane, is like, hmm, that's not one of us, smirks. <laughs> like, as he's walking up, he's walking very, like, casually and jauntily as he's taking off his shirt, <laughs> putting on his, like, gloves. Or Did he have gloves? No, I don't think he did. But, like, you know, he's just, hmm, 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 hmm. And, like... <laughs> Literally, as Indiana Jones is, like, climbing up the thing, just taps him on the boot, and... Mm-hmm. It's just like... All right. Like, this... Meanwhile, like, Indy was trying to fight the, the pilot guy, and it's like, all right, it's a tight pilot guy. I'll be back for you later. I gotta fight this guy. And it's just like... Okay. Yeah, and, like, There's tries sand. to... Yeah, sand, and, like, tries to fight dirty, and then, like, tries to fight dirty another way. It like, goes for the knee, all that stuff. And it's just not working. No. And the boxer guy is just throwing him around like a rag doll. Yeah. Which is such a good scene. <laughs> like, I think at one point, Indy, like, punches him in the stomach and it hurts his own ass. <laughs> um, and, like, he was getting his abs whooped, but unfortunately, our monk friend uh, failed his perception. Yeah, because Marion, Marion takes out the pilot and gets locked into the thing. And while trying to get it out, like, releases the... no. She takes the uh, the wooden blocks that were keeping it mm-hmm. from rotating and knocks the pilot out with those. But the pilot's still stuck in there. The pilot's still stuck in there on the thing. The thing starts spinning. They're having to move. And the freaking another very brutal thing. Uh, Even though they do cut away, but they cut away to blood splatters. Yeah. <laughs> um, where the, the boxer is just like, ah, put up your dukes, put up your dukes. And Indiana Jones, like, knows the fan is like, oh, shit, and, like, ducks. And the pugilist is like, wait, what? Oh, shit. <laughs> Not even a body left, just blood. <laughs> just a spray of blood everywhere. <laughs> uh, now, now that I'm rethinking about that scene, I'm just, ah. Uh. Just, <laughs> I mean, it was probably quick for him. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. And, uh, but then the plane explode. Yeah. Plane explode. And, uh, you know, the Nazi, meanwhile, out in the distance, Nazis see, like, the yeah. explosion. They're, they, they all they're just, just like, like what the uh, fuck? Uh, <laughs> what happened over there? Is that Jones? God damn, damn. it. Why won't he die? <laughs> so then there's a, then there's a very cool car chase scene where, like, I I loved I loved the scene because yeah felt like, they keep felt, fighting over the driver's seat they keep driving and like they, they all the most of the bill like you know all the baddies that are trying to get control back of the car they don't they, have guns they, well well the, okay like the they well the one had a gun that shot in the arm but yeah. um I'm ta- like no the the big baddies in their fancy old car didn't have guns yeah. like god they're idiots no um the, they're just kind of watching. No, like, all of the, like, everyone, all the others trying to get control back of the car didn't feel like they were completely useless fodder. No, no, no. They, 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 they all put up good fights. Yeah, especially that last guy. 
and then like freaking gets Indy like out of the windshield, yeah. throws him over the hood of the car, and like and then one of the guys in the other car was just oh just ram into us, it's fine, kill the guy, <laughs> and like so Indy then has to like dip low onto the car, slide on the sand I, road. I, I was just like, like the oh, sand and dirt road. Thank God hurts. he had so much covering on. Yeah. Like, he had, like, you know, good pants on and a leather jacket and a hat. But, jouch. Yeesh. Which, man, how did that hat not fall? But, like, <laughs> good fitted hat. Um, and he, like, you know, he has to, like, latch the whip on to, under the cars, drag them down, and, like, all this shit. You know, climbs back up. Some, like, I think friend, uh, douchebag, like, French douchebag notices. And is like, oh, behind you. And the guy is there. And, like, and he literally just, bam, kicks the... <laughs> Like, kicks the guy in the face, throws him over the car, and then just literally runs him over. You yeah. see his body go, what? And I was going to say, there was another group, like, another brutal death was um, one of the one of the Nazi cars goes off the cliff and goes, wee! Yeah. And you, see, and you, you see the guys, like, fall out of the ah. car, too. I'm like, oh. <laughs> no, the test dummies. Uh, <laughs> oh, the test dummy humanity. <laughs> Um, but, uh, then they're, like, he, he gets, does he get something out of that, or does he just, he, no, he, he's no, just he getting get, away, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, he's getting away, and they, they meet back up with Guy, and it's like, hey, can you trust these guys? Like, yeah, I trust these guys, and they're on a ship, and, hey. oh, of course, there's a Nazi U-boat! Of, yep, because of course. And, and so, you know... The uh, the ship guys pull a bro move and are trying to help him out. Oh no, it's the the location or something. There's something that they do want, but anyway, so they get it and they're like, oh, you know, I killed Jones. Like the captain's like, I killed, you know, I killed Jones. He wasn't useful, but I I want to keep Marion. It's like you're not in a place to be making deals, and like you know. It's just like, ah, oh, well, shit, I tried. <laughs> uh, Meanwhile, Indiana Jones isn't dead, but is hiding in one of the things, and then gets, like, a cigarette fl- flicked at him. Yeah, ow. Which, meanwhile, all this time, he is still extremely bruised up. Like, you see, oh. he is fucked up. Yeah. And so, like, he's having to, you know, sneak around and all this shit, and mm-hmm. eventually he sneaks onto the U-boat, mm-hmm. and, you know, sneaks into it, takes a guy's clothing yeah. it's too small yeah it was that was a good knocks one. out another guy takes his clothing i mean i just the second hit se- the second hitman level like literally at the point where his his target like bumps mm. into him yeah and it just avoids detection altogether because mm. indy's just that good nice job 47 <laughs> or i guess indy would be 37 37? Because it was in the 30 it wasn't ah. it 37 the year was it yeah uh, 36 36 Nice job, Agent 36. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so they're now on the island, and he's snuck in there, has grabbed a fucking rocket launcher, and is like, I'm gonna blow the fucking arc up. And he's like, okay, sure, go ahead. They call those bluffs so bad. Yeah, he's like, go ahead, Mr. Archaeologist, blow up the historic find. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Indy, you could have had a better plan there. Shit. <laughs> now, see, my thing would have been, uh, yeah, you're right. I'll just blow up you. Boosh! <laughs> well, it was, they were all kind of together. I don't know yeah. how well that would have worked. Yeah. But you would have taken him out, at least. Yeah. But anyway, so both Marion and Indy are captured. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, all the, the shit starts going on, and Indiana Jones finally puts two and two together, and it's like, just in case, don't look at it. Don't look at it. It's too holy. Like, don't look at it. It'll burn your fucking eyes out. And so they're, they don't look at it. And all these, like, ghosty goos come out of the freaking thing. Yeah, first we just see, like, that. Just like, sand. Yeah. And and Indy, I'm... like, actually laughs. But then shit starts happening. He's like, fuck, don't look at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which is funny because he's not a superstitious guy, apparently. But even he, still, practically, he's like... Oh, there's probably something not good here. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, at first, they seem, like, kind of nice ghosts. Like, they seem, you know, so Yeah, we got, like, a nice, nice moment. Well, I mean, nice I mean, moment, I mean, I mean besides just completely frying the video equipment. Yeah, well, they fried the video equipment, but that could just be, you know, ESP interference. Mm-hmm. Or just being like, uh, no, do not let us, like, it's a reason it's called faith. <laughs> it's not supposed to be fact. Um... <laughs> 
but all that stuff. And then, probably sensing that they're Nazis, yeah. they just turn into fucking wraiths and kill everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Lightning the, comes out of the thing, one guy's face fucking melts. That, that one ex- literally one just, just explodes. explodes. like, out of fucking, uh, out of, oh man, what's it called? It's not, it's not Sliders. Uh, I forget. But, um, there, there's another movie where guy head explode. But yeah, the, that guy's head explodes. One guy melts. Uh, what happens to the third guy? I think like mummy, like almost mummified. Or yeah, I like his, his soul just. <gasps> yeah. Everybody gets fucked, yeah. except for Indiana Jones and Marion, who the ghosts just kind of like pass over. Yeah. They're just like, yeah, leave them alone. <laughs> um. And so like the, all of those guys are getting killed horribly like yeah. lightning shooting through them they're getting sucked up into the sky all shit you know dogs and cats living together mass hysteria <laughs> uh and then like a giant fucking sky portal opens up shoots the casket way off into the thing and then and just closes and indian jones opens his eyes after everything has calmed down and sees that the ropes were burned off mm-hmm. and they were let go like, and I like to think that the ghosts did that intentionally. It's like, hey, you're not Nazis. We'll let you live. <laughs> and you know what? Here's the bindings. <laughs> Get out of here, you scamp. <laughs> yeah. They're just happy to be alive. We cut back to... We cut to, back to, uh, the... to Washington. Yep. And apparently the government has taken the Ark. And Indiana and like the head of the university are like, hey, you need to... This needs to go to a museum. It's a very important historical find in religious, like, culture. And it's like, oh, and yeah, we'll probably put it in a museum eventually, but right now it's very dangerous and we need to research it. It's like, who's researching it? Top men, I assure you. Who? Top men. And then, and then, like, it just cuts to... And they're, like, locking it into a box, and they just... Fucking and a, basically what looked like a warehouse of a bunch of other probably very equally dangerous artifacts. Yeah, and here's the thing, uh, I know what that location is. Really? Yeah, and it's revealed in a movie we will never watch because I don't want to watch Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Oh. So I'll just tell you, it's Area 51. Oh my god, that's amazing. It's Area 51. Because <laughs> they go to Area 51 in the King in the uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and a box gets broken open, and you see the Ark. Oh, nice. So, it's, it's Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and I, that's how it ends. It just ends on that map painting of the giant warehouse, and the theme starts. Dun! Da-da-dun-dun! Dun! dun, 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 dun and that's it. That's the movie. And goddamn, it is so much fun. <laughs> it, it was. It, it was. I, I, I genuinely really enjoyed that. That would be a, definitely another... No, they're like, let me rewatch this with my earbuds and what did I miss? <laughs> yeah, like this that's just one of those movies where you watch that and you're like, yeah, of fucking course they made theme park shit about that. <laughs> it fits perfectly. It make it makes you wanna make like a like I I would I would read or watch something else with it. Well, here's the here's the thing. A lot of filmmakers, when they're amateur filmmakers, a lot of them cut their teeth on making fan films of Indiana Jones. Still to this day, it is a very popular fan film thing. Really? Yeah, huh. like, I think J.J. Abrams, one of his first films was an Indiana Jones fil- fan film. Don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. But some, like, current, like, big, big, boy big film maker. Yeah, big, yeah. big boy uh, director. Yeah, like, it's it's a very common thing. Because it's just such a world that, like, you want to be the hero of. <laughs> Which let's let's not mince words here. Indiana Jones is not a great guy. Mm. Like not a great. He's a good guy, but he also has a lot of faults. Oh yeah. And kills a lot of people. And I was you know that brings me that brings me. He to is something. a serial murderer. Like like he just seems so ca- like I'm like this is like just so casually shooting guys in the face didn't feel yeah. didn't look like he felt any remote more set any point I'm like this is normal for him. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's he's been dealing with this shit since he was like, I think according to young Indiana Jones, like since he was twelve, bruh, going on adventures with his dad because his dad was like this when he was Indiana's age. Oh. Yeah. Um. And all this shit, like, yeah, it's just fuck. <laughs> this is this is life for him. 
But yeah, he's just mowing down countless amounts of people. Granted, most of them are Nazis. But at least that we saw in this movie. Yeah. Granted, most of them are Nazis. Uh, and so, you know, not great. But not great people. But still, a lot of murder. A lot of murder. <laughs> It's it's amazing that he can sleep well at night, but that's the whole thing. It's supposed to be an action advan like action adventure fantasy, basically. Yeah. You know, it's it's a pure power fantasy, <laughs> and it it's it's just action for action's sake, and it's great. And like, I'm going back to the whole rating thing because like after like especially after watching the movie after the fact like there was just so much fun and excitement like it didn't feel like what I would expect going into what, what we might consider an R-rated movie. And, and like, that especially... goes back to what I'm saying where that's because so many modern R films are trying to be an R. So they go way into being an R. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I think the only films recently that I've seen that are R movies that don't necessarily feel like R movies are the Deadpool movies. Which the Deadpool movies are bloody as fuck and clearly R movies. But... They still have a sense of fun to them, and they're clearly just making the movie that they want to make. Yeah. Whereas a lot of our movies, it's like, one, either A, they're horror movies, or B, they're just really, really trying to push that R rating. Because they know that so many people are just programmed to be like, oh, I don't want to see something unless it's hard and gritty. Oh, it's an R, it's probably hard and gritty. It doesn't need to be. Stop gunning for ratings. Stop aiming for a rating. Stop it. Stop aiming for a demographic or anything like that. Make the fucking movie that should be made, that you want to make, that the creative team wants to make, and then whatever rating it gets, it gets. But that doesn't make money. It does now because there's not nearly as much of a stigma about ratings anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, that's going away, but studios are still acting as if there is. But that hasn't been a thing for years. I mean, Logan was R. It was a like, huge hit. Deadpool and Deadpool 2 are R's. Like, there are R-rated movies that are hits. Sure, both of those are comic book movies, but guess what? I mean... Comic book movies are a good gateway for anything. You know another R-rated movie... I'm pretty sure it was R-rated. <clears throat> um, another one I remember that kind of had some good, decent appeal with not... So, back in the day, uh, 21 Jump, the 21 Jump Street movie that came mm -hmm. out some years ago, I snuck my siblings... And their friends. Who Which, by the all... way, that's a remake. Yeah. Yeah, I know. That. I know. I'm aware that's a remake. I think I have the original show DVD somewhere. I never got mm. around to watching them. But um, I stuck all my siblings and a couple of their friends into the movies, not even caring that it was R-rated. Because it, that, cause that was another fun movie. Like, I barely noticed it was an R-rated movie. We barely noticed. It was just yeah. a fun movie. And, and I'm not saying that everything should be rated R, too. I'm mm -hmm. saying just don't gun for a rating. Like... Evil Dead 2, I don't even know if it has a rating, technically, but that would be an R. That's another, but yeah. But Army of Darkness is PG-13. Both are great movies! Yeah. But that's because they were the movies that they wanted to make. Like, I think Army of Darkness had a little bit more executive pull on it, but still, you know, it's just like, fuck it. This is the movie, we're having fun with it. You don't need to gun for a thing. Somebody will find it. Like, there is always an audience. Instead of being like, we have to pander to this demographic, just remember, if you make it, they will come. Like, mm -hmm. it's just like, if you build it, they will come. Somebody will find it. I mean, shit. Nothing is assured to be a classic. Unless, it, it maybe it's a Disney movie, and then somebody will think it's a classic. But some <laughs> Disney movies are absolutely shit. The original Pete's Dragon is awful. The new Lion King is abysmal. It's shit. <laughs> the new Aladdin is terrible. Yeah, I've 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 heard some. And the both of the Maleficent movies are hot, hot garbage. <laughs> Just absolute garbage. And ruin the character of Maleficent because it's like, oh no, she was misunderstood, and she really wants to be a good person. No, who wants that out of Maleficent? I want Maleficent to be an irredeemable bitch who loves it. Yeah, but I'm I'm thinking back. She is like the fucking mistress of Satan. <laughs> I'm but like I'm thinking about like just 
someone will find someone like make the movie someone will find it word of mouth will get through and you'll find you'll find your your group of people that will enjoy it but no and, and just we, they want their money sooner yeah and just be they honest honest about it too because here's the thing if you market it honestly and if you if it's clear that because here's the thing it is so obvious in interviews when like the creative team does not give a fuck about a movie and more often than not that's because of executive fucking like it, it, executive fucking with it and all this shit because like the the actors agreed to sign on now sure sometimes actors agree to sign on purely because they have a speeding ticket that they need to pay off but <laughs> oh come on they have more money than they, they have more than 200 dollars in their bank account i'm sure you have no idea how much they speed anyway <laughs> <laughs> um, or they had, you know, they have house rent coming up or something like house payment, but they got to pay for that mansion every month, you know, until it's paid <laughs> off. Um, so that's true. But if you're, if you're making a movie that people do like the idea of, but then by the time of the interview, which is usually either mid shooting or after the movie has been shot and they just clearly are just going by what the teleprompter says or what they were told to say and have no life or energy to them you fucked up can i tell you i'm i'm here i i am about to trash rise of skywalker again because i guess that's what i do now nobody uh, seemed like they yeah, were having yeah, fun like the the difference in the interviews with the the only people who seem to be having Ridley, fun... The, with Daisy Ridley, the, the difference of the ex level of excitement she had w during The Force Awakens to her interviews during Rise of Skywalker, completely different. Like, yeah, the only people who seem to be having a good time were Poe and Finn. And that's just because they, they're, like, fucking best friends. Oh, um, yeah, their dynamic was amazing. Yeah, the, there's, there is a reason why so many people wanted them to get together. <laughs> This is just like they're fucking perfect. God, like, they're oh, so good. I was still on Tumblr during the Force Awakens days. And so much shipping. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but no. Instead, the Raylos got their way. Ugh. Any whoozles. I'm I'm. I'll, I'll I'll find a way to trash the Rise of Skywalker in another episode. But yeah, that's yeah. But back um, to your point, what you're saying. But yeah, like, and the horrible thing is too, like during the mid shooting interviews, Daisy Ridley was a bit more full of life. But then I'm guessing. That she saw an early version of the final cut of the film. <laughs> yeah. Because there are some early cuts of the film that people were talking about being good. You know, and it was apparently, like, way longer. It was going to be, like, much longer than, uh, than, um, friggin' Last Jedi and all that stuff. And that's just not the movie we got. And, and, you know, I wish they would release some of those scenes, but that... They won't. But, yeah, but they, one, they won't, and two, if they do, it would be in the DVD, and I don't want to support that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just like a lot of people are like, oh, man, when, when Sonic comes, like, Sonic the movie comes to Blu-ray, add the alternative version with the original, like, with the oh. original uh, thing just so we can see what it would have looked oh, like. Oh, my God. I, I... Just for morbid curiosity's sake, they're never gonna do that. No. They're never gonna do that. <laughs> if you're lucky, somebody will leak it, but they won't. <laughs> they probably destroyed all of that data. Burn it, burn it now. The, the second, I was the day after all the backlash on Twitter, they just probably hit the Beep. delete button. Yeah, purge. <laughs> Instead, let's just bankrupt this animation studio by making them do it again. Oh yeah. <laughs> Though then again, it's also the same studio that made the uh, Lion King reboot, so oh, maybe it's okay that they're gone, because oh. now Disney doesn't have the ability to use them to make more shit. <laughs> Disney, stop it! You don't need to remake these movies. Hey, remember before home release was such a huge thing? Every seven years after its initial release date, you would just re-release shit to theaters, which is a tactic that you actually still do for some of the main. Disney classics every now and then. You just re-release them to theaters. In fact, you've done it before with the animated Lion King. That's even less effort for this same amount of money. <laughs> Are you telling me that the people who want to bring their kids to the new Lion King, because it's like, oh, I saw this, and now I can show them in a theater, wouldn't just go and watch the original that they actually like in a theater? And, you know, I can... I can... 
again, like, I can kind of almost understand it for, like, older, like, the older Disney movies, like the Dumbo one. I never, I don't even know. No, it. Dumbo is absolute shit. Oh, it is it? <laughs> it's absolute shit. And you want to know why? Tim Burton. Oh. And literally, it's a fucking weird soft sequel? It's it's weird as shit. It's like a satirical parody of the original. I, I mean, because okay. the first like the first half hour is the original movie. Yeah, again, I can. And and, and like, first I, off, Dumbo, the original Dumbo, is a fucking goddamn treasure. Never speak bad about it again in my presence. I'm not. I will I'm, show it to you. Okay, but I'm just saying, like, I understand the mentality of wanting to remake something that, like. Why just re release it? Well. Well, because they might think it might just, it might need some touch-ups to reappeal to the audience. But on the other hand, Lion King, what was that, like, 92? Yeah. It's not even that old. Well, 95. 95. Oh, yeah, even, like, it's as old as my brother. Like it It's might, as old as me. Yeah. But, like, and there, there's no reason to not, and literally, if it's like, oh, man, this might be problematic, like the freaking Jim Crows and Dumbo. Just before the film, just have a little... Which they do this on Disney+, Plus, by the way. Oh. Just a little thing that says, This is shown in its original version. Some things might not be technically okay for the time, but we're not going to censor it because this is how the movie is. Done! <laughs> <laughs> which, honestly, if you're going to start doing that, Disney, fucking put Song of the South on there. Ooh. Just do it. <laughs> Yeah, people will give you backlash. Fuck them. It's a movie. It got made. People should be allowed to see it. I don't believe that you should just completely block access off of media for people. That's wrong. That's censorship. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. Uh, it just, it's just, it's stupid. But anyway, Indiana Jones is a great movie. N the movie should not be remade unless there's a valid reason... Like, what, would, what would you consider a valid reason, then? Pete's Dragon, the original, sucks ass. Pete's Dragon, the new one, is fine. Huh. If it's a shitty movie and you can make it better, go ahead and remake it. Disney, I'm fully fine with you remaking Sword in the Stone or Black Cauldron. Those movies didn't do that great. Try it again. Do it animated, but try it again. And don't do it 3D animated. Uh... We have enough 3D animation. Go back to some 2D. You could be... Like, that could be a second renaissance for you, I, Disney. I, I if you started doing both CG and 2D, you'd be pretty much the only studio doing that at this point. Because everybody, except for Japan, has pretty much given up on 2D animation because it's more expensive. Disney, you can afford it. You can fucking afford it. Yeah, but, and but I know for a fact that, that your concept artists already work in 2D. I mean, like, the, I was going to say, because like, cause the last time they attempted that, like, to do the 2D was Princess and the Frog, right? And that didn't... No. Do... Oh, no? Winnie the Pooh. Oh, fuck. I, for... I keep forgetting. See? And that's probably why they're not doing it, because people aren't seeing or remembering these. Yeah, because it released the same fucking day as a blockbuster. What, what day did it release? Same day? I, I don't remember, but it released the same day as, like, I think, like, The Dark Knight or something. <laughs> like, a big movie. Okay. But Winnie the Pooh, like, the last Winnie the Pooh movie? Good movie! It's a good movie. Uh, what, what year did it come out? Uh, it was like 2012 or something. 2011, okay. 2011. So July 2011. What else came? That movies that came out July 20. Like big movie is 2011. Okay, let's see. Super A, Pirates, Harry Potter. Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. That was it. Yeah. It came out the same. I think the and same day. Cap America came out too. Mm hmm. I think that was July 4th. Okay. That but makes like, sense. I think Harry Potter was the exact same fucking day. Okay. Then I. I as the last Harry Potter movie. Yeah. It's definitely. Yeah. Of course. Part two. Of yeah. Of course it was going to fail. Oh. Everybody was watching Harry Potter. I wonder if Disney did that intentionally, though. I don't think so. Hmm. But like. It just. There's nothing wrong with 2D animation. You know that that's true because every time you sneak 2D animation into a modern movie or a Disney Parks attraction that you just released, everybody goes fucking nuts. Like the, like in Mary Poppins. The yeah, Mary one. Poppins, everybody fucking went nuts on, uh, on that scene. Especially because a lot of people didn't like the new Mary Poppins. Mm -hmm. They thought it was a cheap recreation of the original without the soul. Mm -hmm. I can agree with that. I like the songs. 
<laughs> like, I like the songs and I think the actors do a pretty okay job, for the most part. It could have been better, but it could have been a lot worse. But that 2D animation scene, which breaks my heart that they had to outsource to do. What? They had to outsource it. It wasn't in it wasn't in-house Disney because they didn't have enough 2D specialists. You're bull. Oh my god, you have to be fucking shitting me. Nope. What the fuck? Most of the 2D animation at Disney right now is either A, on the TV side, which aren't used to working with that big of a budget, or B, are the one guy that they still have doing 2D animation in the movies and parks. Oh my god. Yeah, and... But also in Moana, uh, Maui's, like, living tattoo is 2D animation. And that's, like, 2D animation that's done on a 3D character. And that was, like, one of the first times that a movie did that for the whole movie. Now they do that more often. Like, Mm Spider-Verse, you know, Spider-Ham is 2D, uh, or at least partially 2D. And all of the faces are 2D on top of 3D models. 2D is still alive. It can still come back in a huge way. Don Bluth is working on a Dragon's Lair movie based on the arcade game. I know. I supported it. I have a poster to prove it. <laughs> like, he is. I, have a pro, I have a poster, I have a pin, I have a lanyard, I have a shirt because I donated a shit ton of money. Because <laughs> I want that movie made. Because I want 2D animation. The people who did Lilo and Stitch, they left Disney and they had a Kickstarter for like a steampunk like train heist movie. Ooh. I don't think it got through. Oh, but bummer. it had test footage and it looked fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying the 2D animation has to like reconsume 3D and 3D now never happens again. You can do both. Like, look at Delgo. Delgo is a shit movie with a shit story and shit animation. But if you look at the concept art, which is done in 2D, it actually looks good. Mm. It was not meant. The art style doesn't work for 3D. And you know what? Disney? Some of your stuff didn't either. I remember Chicken Little. Oh my god. (laughs) I remember Chicken Little. (laughs) You may want people to forget, but I remember. You guys. Motherfucker, you put it in Kingdom Hearts 2. No one will ever forget that you did that. You're so upset. I'm extremely upset. (laughs) That movie was Disney trying to be DreamWorks, which why the fuck would they be? You know, I always forget that it was a Disney thing just because of how off it felt. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's my rant of the episode. Yeah, I got to rant about Skywalker. You got to rant about the current state of Disney. The current state of animation, honestly. Yeah. Uh... Not to mention a lot of 2D animators are on YouTube and they probably would like actual stable pay. If you don't have people in the actual industry right now in your in-house thing, I'm sure some of them would go with your bullshit art uh, policies to get a job. We need money, please. Yeah. We're poor. Just know that, you know, the fact that you own all of the art that they make in and out of work hours due to your contract, your porn stash is going to get bigger. <laughs> it's going to. It's going to. It, it does all the time. Anyway... All of the concept artists draw porn. Some of them do it because they just draw porn. Mm Because a lot of artists are perverts. I would know. (laughs) And two, uh, a lot of them do it just because they're unhappy with that policy. Yeah. A lot of artists are spiteful. I would know. (laughs) But I think that's it for us this time. We got got to vent a little and we got to talk about a really fun movie. Yeah. Uh, if you're on YouTube, leave us a like, you know, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment. Even if you can't think of anything to say, just say something fucking weird and I'll probably read it out because that I find that funny. <laughs> um, you know, same thing on iTunes. Uh, again, random bullshit. You know, like just like, I'm the king of jelly beans. The moon stalks the wolf at midnight. Like, just do it. I'll read it. I don't give a shit. Yeah, why not? If you do something crazy and I find it and I laugh, I'll save it and I'll read it. Yo, same for uh, Twitter. We we are both on Twitter. We have mm-hmm. a we have a uh, Twitter for the general podcast out of the ice pod one, and my Twitter handle is cat twenty seven. Mine's mutagen works. Commission's open. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just retweet memes. I beg for commissions. <laughs> and also retweet memes. <laughs> but yeah. And post art. Yeah. While begging for commissions. 
crochet stuff ever on on Twitter and show it on Twitter every now and then. Mm -hmm. I should do that more. Yeah. But any hoozles. But yeah, so um, that's it for us. We did have a Patreon, but I realized how desperate that looked. <laughs> I, I was trying to make us look more professional, but the fact that, you know, on YouTube we only have 14 subscribers at the time of this recording and uh, how many downloads do we have? Like 100? Something like that. I yeah. have to look again. I realized it looked less professional and more absolutely desperate, and that's not a good look and not what we were trying to do. So I've gone ahead and unlaunched that now. Uh, there was only two backers anyway. Yeah, but... uh, so, you know, maybe someday, you know, because the one thing I want, I want to avoid putting ads be at the beginning and, you know, middle of stuff for as long as possible, honestly. Like, the, the mid-rolls and shit like that, like, on YouTube and stuff. I want to avoid doing that as much as possible, because everybody fucking hates those. <laughs> I'm no different. So, eventually, you know, we might start doing merch. We might relaunch a Patreon. All that stuff. Whatever. That's for later. Right right now, at least in my, at least how I think of it, right now we're just trying to make a fun podcast and, tr and to try to reach people that want to try to have fun with us. You yeah. know, at the end of the day, that's what this is about. Yeah. And in, in all honesty, like, our true intentions on this is just we want to do something kind of fun yeah. you know and if it becomes something it becomes something if it doesn't it doesn't yeah whatever <laughs> yeah you know let's just let's just go with it enjoy life and do all that fun stuff tell us but also tell us if you're enjoying life too we'd love feedback and support or criticism give us criticism oh also our uh, the youtube name changed because i realized that nothing in particular was a really shitty name <laughs> Uh, so now it's the Kingdom of Geekalon. Yeah. Which is a reference to what we call our apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. it from us. Uh, Later. Bye.